If Jews originated with the biblical patriarch Abraham around 1800 before common era, then their God also appeared through Moses to the Jewish people at Mount Sinai approximately 3,400 years ago. When did the African spirituality uh, begin? Ladies and gentlemen from around the world, welcome to Marry Father Family Network on Kamiti Hebrew Ethics YouTube channel, where you will see the best thoroughly researched information on our full salvation knowledge and spirituality. This presentation is proudly brought to you by our Hammer Nature, Topi Uni Kenny Jakanja, Teacher Rabbi, Ellen Dumizu, wherever you are, Ozani, Karibu, Mwaya, Ndewonu. Wami Pele Kile Amojela E Kabo Enjoy Kami Emedio Enjoy this transformative experience. The point that we want to raise here is that the biblical patriarch is approximately four thousand years ago. But there is prehistoric uh, beginnings in ancient Africa that is about 300,000 years ago. So that gives us about 296,000 years when humanity was already moving around the whole of Africa. So the question that we need to deal with is how to then an African become a Hebrew Israelite and worship Yahweh. What we know is that the Todilo Hills gives us proof of a 70,000 year old sacred snake or rock religion. We also know that the impossible feat of ancient Africans has come up with a 2 billion year old nuclear reactor. We have a video of the same title that proves that. So it's about 2.4 billion years ago, humanity was already all over Africa before Abraham was even on the earth then how does anyone become an israelite if israelites are not older than africans any claims by any melanin dominant human being a muntu a bantu and saying sonini and all these other terms and claiming that they are israelites is based on something else other than true origins because abraham was born 1800 before common era and we have been here on earth for ions of earth, even the religion itself cannot stand the test of time. Ours began 300,000 years ago and moved up until today. It's still there, we are still here. So there's no need to bury your head in the sand. The truth is facing you and you have to deal with it. We want to deal with this topic seriously. If Israelites are not older than Africans, how does an African become an Israelite. Let's dive into the evidence that demonstrates that Israelites are not older than Africans by hundreds if not trillions of years and its deadly implication is apparent. We will use scientific, biblical and non-scientific perspectives including history and archaeology. We are the oldest people on the earth. We know that Europeans appeared on the earth 8,000 years ago. There's evidence. You can read our book Free from God. It illustrates fully, comprehensively, that Europeans arrived about 8,500 days ago on Earth coming out of ancient melanin-dominant human beings. Prehistoric Europeans looked melanin-dominant and the modern Europeans today came out of the new data that is confirmed that about 8,500 years ago, early hunter gatherers in Spain, Luxembourg and, Luxembourg and Hungary also had darker skin. They did not have two versions of genes SLC24A5 and SLC45A2 that leads to depigmentation and therefore to becoming pale like what Europeans are today. These are facts, scientific facts. It's not speculation. The DNA evidence shows that human origins via the mitochondrial DNA, mtDNA, is very clear that 300,000 years ago a woman gave birth to all of the original indigenous people out of which morphed out other people. The same with the Y chromosome evidence, which track paternal lineage, shows that all men can trace their lineage back to an African male ancestor, similar with the tracing of an African female ancestor about 300,000 years ago. That is DNA. We are not saying evolution here. We say DNA. It is clear that the genetic maps that we have 
the genetic distance map from the history of geography of human genes by Cavalli Sforza and the genetic structure and history of Africans and African Americans by Sarah Tishkoff. Both genetic maps show that melanin dominant human beings, Indians, melanin dominant people in India are alone together, uh, separate from all other humans, like two pairs in a pod, shown here, showing the origins of Europeans. How then do we have black people, melanin dominant people, claiming to be original true Israelites? You read the book, uh, The Journey of Men, A Genetic Odyssey by Spencer Wells. It's very clear. It tells you that you are more likely to find simple, extremely divergent genetic lineages within a single African village than you are in the whole world. The majority of genetic polyphemisms found in our species are found uniquely in Africans, Europeans, Asians, and Native Americans carry only a small sample of the extraordinary diversity that can be found in any African village. When you look at the migration patterns out of Africa migration dating to almost 100,000 years ago when early humans walked, moved, and migrated out of Africa, it is clear that the population that migrated into the ancient Near East did so much later. The Semitic people from whom the Israelites descended emerged around 4,000 to 5,000 BCE. Uh, 4,000, 5,000 5, years ago in the Near East. The time frame that is given here, that is given to the ancestors of the Israelites who came into existence, it was well later because humans had been living in Africa for tens of thousands of years. So, in terms of both DNA and migration history, Israelites are much younger than African populations. How then do we have melanin dominant human beings or Bantus who claim to be original true Israelites. It is interesting here. Interesting indeed. Well, let's look at archaeology and the history that it gives us. Israelites as a distinct group appear in the history and archaeological record around 1200 BCE, about 3000 years ago. This is when they are mentioned in ancient Hamitic writings and other records. And it is when they begin to form their kingdoms like the kingdom of Israel. Prior to this time, the region where they are found today, the region where they claim to be, was occupied by melanin dominant people, the Canaanites, and many, many other groups. This civilization that we are talking about, in the context of the origins of human presence on earth, dates to hundreds of thousands of years older. In places like Oklo, it turns into billions of years. One of the world's greatest civilizations developed around thousands of years, well before the Israelites emerged. Other African groups, such as the Nubians and the peoples of Sub-Saharan Africa, have deep histories that predate the Israelites by millions of years. Three billion years, if we are to look at it from the collective spheres. How then do we have black people claim to be original through Israelites? When you go to the Bible itself, the biblical record and its perspective mentions that Abraham, a figure, lived around 1800 BCE, thousands of years after human populations were established in Africa. If you go into the book of Genesis, it describes the early human populations who descended from Noah and Noah's son, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, at the same time with the arrival and appearance of Europeans on the scene, well after Africans were already well established before the rise of the Israelites all over the earth. The oldest race on earth Melanin dominant human beings, according to science, according to anything that you can use to measure. How then do we have black people claiming to be original Israelites? You can watch our video of the same title here and you also read our book. It will illustrate these facts graphically. When you look at the cultural spread, how cultures spread all over the earth, it is very clear that civilizations like Hamid and Nubia were highly advanced long before Israel came a nation, became a nation. 
Hamid in particular was a cultural and political powerhouse with a civilization stretching back to almost hundreds of thousands of years, almost a million years, clear proof that you can walk to and see and say, oh, here is the proof. You can see here, Ukrainian scientists said that this thing is almost 800,000 years old. Therefore, the religious texts and the historical records tell us that African peoples and their cultures are recognized as much, much, much older than the Israelites. There were no Israelites at a certain point of humanity on earth. There was nobody who walked on the earth who was called a Hebrew, who was called an Israelite. None. The pyramids today are still standing. The temple of Yahweh is not there. It's a wonder of the world, the pyramid. While it's the temple of the God of the universe is in rubbles. How do you reconcile that? Africans introduced the God concept. They knew and they know the truth about the unknowable real creator who dwells beyond the chasm. And they formalized the foundations of monotheism before Abraham was ever on the earth. The story of Abraham being a monotheist is an interpolation of what they had already started. The father of monotheism is an African known as Akhenaton or Iknaton. Moses and the Torah who traditionally lived in 1200 BCE, they believe that they compiled this story, it is believed and it is understood that it was compiled in the 16th century. Well, after they knew these stories, so how do we have a black person claiming to be an original true Hebrew Israelite? Let's look at other non-scientific uh, proofs, like linguistic evidence. Languages can also tell us about this age. And spread of populations. Many African languages, such as those in the Niger Congo family, are much older than Hebrew. The language of the ancient Hebrews, which is thought to be sacred, is predated by African languages that go back to hundreds and thousands of years before the emergence of Hebrew, as well as a distinct language in Near East, and the formulation of the alphabet was already done before Moses was ever born. Scientists today have traced the world's 6,000 modern languages from English to Mandarin, back to a single mother tongue, an ancestral language spoken in Africa 50,000 to 70,000 years ago, a Hebrew started to walk on the earth 4,000 years ago, almost 66,000 years before him, there was already people. New research published in the Science Journal suggests that uh, this single ancient language resulted in human civilization, a diaspora, as well as advances in art, hunting tools, technology, and laid the foundation for the world cultures. You can go and read from this, uh, the word from PRX was languages traced back to ancient Africa. Proto-Hebrew and early Canaanite language is only about 1200 to 1000 BCE. African artifacts predate Hebrew artifacts by millions of years. When considered as issues of human civilization and advancement, like writing, sculpturing, it's, it's, it's something else that you have to behold. Look at this this way. Oldest ancient African artifact, a stone tools, is about 3.3 million years ago. And the older one, tools, is about 2.6 million years ago. The Blombos cave writings and other artifacts, about 75,000 years ago. We are leaving a lot of other evidences here. We have already given the 5 billion and we shall give in future the 78 trillion proof. When Melanie Dominic Pim were already on the earth. And there's the 5,000 year old. Hamitic artifacts. We have got Nubian artifacts. The only artifact today that you can say is the oldest linked to Hebrew culture and the language is yesterday, actually. is the Geza calendar, which is about 1,000 years ago, 990 years ago. So, despite the prominence of biblical figures like Adam, Eve, Moses, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and many other religious texts directly telling us all this, there is no evidence, archaeological evidence, of such artifacts. Small little inscriptions here and there suspect. Whereas, when you come to our kings, and our rulers, and our monuments, and our inscriptions, they are immortalized, they are there, in stone, the written on stone, the oldest religious text is written in the pyramids on stone. Nothing else pre exists or uh, predates it. Our structures are still there. Our kings are still there. 
So in conclusion, it is very clear that in summary, Africans as a people and as the cradle of modern humanity are significantly older than the Israelites. We have shown the evidence DNA, we have shown archaeological, historical evidence, we have shown cultural, linguistic and religious texts. So how can anyone who is a melanin dominant human being claim to be an Israelite? What formula do they use? It is the formula of conversion. These are all converts. Just like the Khazars and just like many, many other Europeans that convert to Judaism. The, these Africans are converts. They are not indigenous. They are not original. So they are telling us that they are suffering from an identity crisis. That's why President Yorim Seven told one melanin dominant person who calls himself an Arab that he is not an Arab. Very, very, very clear. We want to welcome you back home to your Ubuntu Ma'ati identity. You can do so through our Bantu University, where you can start Bantu Foundations and relive divine ancestral wisdom and start to compile and craft a compelling legacy yourself. You can visit our website, myfado.org, to register to start Bantu Foundations. You can also visit us on our Instagram page, Marifado Lower Dash US, or you can email us on joinitmarifado.com. Till we meet again, your human nature to be Christian Rabbi LMD, Mr. Ken Jaganja says, Welcome home. You are not a Hebrew Israelite. You are not an Arab. You are a melanin dominant human being. That is your identity, which is your power. Amen.